most of us, if you've got your Bible, I want you to open them up too, and you can pull this up on the screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 in the AMP. We're going to go on the AMP. 1 Corinthians 14. I want to greet those that are watching. I know that the Cuneos, you're probably watching tonight. Uh, my wife said, make sure I say hey to Adriana. I think you're watching tonight. We miss you. I know they've had you in lockdown for about a year, Adriana, but hey, you know, we're still with you. Still love you. What's that? Oh, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 in the AMP. Sorry, I didn't get the signal down, Gil. I didn't know this signal was, say it again. So you could do this one. I have to get our signals down. In the AMP, 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Now, we ended last week because we've been just doing training in prophecy, right? And we ended last week doing an exercise. How many enjoyed that last week? Yeah. A lot of them headed downstairs. Hey, Stephen, come on up here. Move up here. I want you to be with us. Move up here with Pastor Tim. He So we're going to jump back into this tonight. We have a few different ones we're going to be doing. But before we do, I want to share a couple uh, scripture references with you. Look at 1 Corinthians 14. One, it says, pursue this love with what? Eagerness. Make it your what? Your goal. Make it your goal. Yet earnestly desire and cultivate spiritual gifts to be used by believers for the benefit of the church. How many here, that's you, you, you want to learn to... Operate in spiritual gifts. Every believer should want to operate in spiritual gifts. And they're available to the church. It says, but especially that you may what? Now, it's interesting. They add this in the notes. It says, to foretell the future. And we're going to find out that is an element of prophecy. But the basic, really the basic gift of prophecy really has no foretelling in it. You know, we'll, we'll see that as we read on down here. But there's more foretelling, but not foretelling. Like the future type of events. That, that is prophecy. Don't get me wrong. But the basic gift of prophecy, it goes on. To speak a new message from God to the people. Next verse. It says, for one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people but to God. No one understands him or catches his meaning. But by the Spirit, he speaks what? And what's there in the brackets? Isn't that, isn't that great? To be, actually have a, a language where you could actually speak to God secrets, mysteries, secret truths, hidden things. Now, next verse. It says, but on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people. And this is the basic gift of prophecy, right? Guys, it speaks to people for what? Edification. To, to promote their spiritual growth. Uh, it's interesting. I kind of eavesdropped a little bit and jumped into one of the groups that myself and Deborah and Jasmine and Sarah were in. And, you know, the Lord, of course, knows everything about all of us, right? But I don't know everything about you and you don't know everything about me. But yet when the Lord, by prophecy, gives things to you that you know that person doesn't know, that's the word of knowledge that that person is getting, right? Well, what that does a lot of times, that'll promote spiritual growth because it's like, wow. God does love me. God does see me. But what's exciting is not only for the one that's getting it, but for the one that's giving it. How many here have ever been used like that? And then after you use it, it's like, okay, Lord, I want to do that again. Yeah, it's very, very, very addictive. Because you want to help people. Most people do want to help people. It says, and he speak word, speaks words of encouragement to uphold and advise them concerning matters of God. Otherwise, uh, sometimes you'll say things that'll totally encourage somebody and you don't have a clue. I mean, you, or have you ever had one like this that the Lord gives you one? It's like, Lord, that doesn't make any sense. Okay. And then you give it and the person's like, wow, that was so awesome. I really needed that. Really? What does that mean? <laughs> and they tell you what it means. Right? Encouragement. And, it's, and speak words of consolation to compassionately, compassionately comfort people. You know, there's there's... So much going on in the world right now. Some people just need comforting. Uh, it's just like Dave said, here, here he is and dropping this gal off. And she's totally terrified of what's going on in the world right now. 
You know, well, he starts what? Giving comfort just with the message of Jesus. Message of Jesus. And then she's real curious. You know, it, one of the things Dave said, he said to her was, well, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pastor and I'm not religious. Well, that'll kind of bend your mind a little bit if you don't know what he's talking about. What, what do you mean? And he starts talking about the relationship with Jesus. That was a totally new thought to her. Wow, see, everybody's interested in that. A relationship with Jesus? Can you have that? And then she, when she gets out, it's like, I'm going to have to think about that. Yeah, well, that's part of that comfort. Next verse. The one who speaks in a tongue edifies who? Himself. When you're, when you ha you're using your prayer language and you're praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, you're really edifying yourself. I looked that word up. It means to build yourself up. One of the meanings of that word in the Greek is to embolden. It's to embolden yourself. You know, and, and, and another meaning is to fill with the Spirit. That's what's happening, but it's for you. For you. I mean, one of the things that was happening at the church of Corinth that Paul had to correct was this. There was tongues going on all over the building. Otherwise, when you come, they may greet you in tongues. They may do the announcements in tongues. They may preach in tongues. And then Paul had to get real specific. He said, listen, tongues is not a preaching gift. See, tongues, there's the, there's the gift of tongues and interpretation, right? And that's for the church. But when you're just speaking in an unknown tongue, that's for you. You're building yourself up. It says, but one who prophesies edifies the church, promotes growth in spiritual wisdom, devotion, holiness, joy. Next verse. Now, I wish that all of you spoke in an unknown tongue, but even more, I wish that you would all prophesy. That one, the one who prophesies is greater and more useful than the one who speaks in tongues. Talking about corporately. Unless he what? Translate or explains what he says. So that the church may be edified, instructed, and proven, and strengthened. Now, wait, I want you to jump down. Just jump down to verse 12. I want to look at one verse. So we're going to stay in the letter of 1 Corinthians. But we're, we're actually going to go uh, back a couple chapters. It says, so it is with you, since you're so very eager... To have what? And what? That should be everybody, every church, everywhere. Everybody should be eager to have spiritual gifts and manifestations of the Spirit. He says this, strive, this is what we're doing tonight. Strive to excel in ways that will what? Build up the church. Otherwise, if we, if we, through exercises like this, can really tune ourselves to get so we're connecting to the Holy Spirit to help people, Man, that's building up the church. That's building up the church. Now, uh, go stay in 1 Corinthians. We go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 9. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit will, will be the one relationship that, that will determine your effectiveness in the kingdom of God. Your Holy Spirit relationship. You know, uh, we had uh, extraordinations last night, our Bible school, and... Uh, Pastor Dave Oberg and Joey were on the screen here. They, they're from Reno. They pastored Reno. But they, they were teaching a class just on leadership. And it was such a great class. And one of the things he said, there was a man that had been in the ministry, I think they said like 55 years. And somebody asked him a really good question. They said, if being in ministry 55 years, what is the one thing that you would change? If you could go back knowing now 55, what's the one thing you'd change? This is what he said. He said, you know, the first 25 years in ministry, he said, you know, understand, I, I was filled with the Spirit, but I never really spoke in tongues unless it was in a corporate setting, you know, everybody praying and in a prayer meeting. And, you know, I would jump in then. He says, I never did. And after 25 years of ministry, I got to the place where, wow, this is actually a really important thing that I have here. Maybe I need to exercise this. And says, for, so from that day on, I began to exercise my prayer language and Pray extensively in other tongues. He says, wow, what that did in my life in ministry is just immeasurable. He said, if I had to change one thing, I'd go back and start that way. I'd go back and start that way. See, because one of the things that Paul is doing, he's teaching the, the church, but he's not, he's not dissing on tongues. Matter of fact, when he ends his whole teachings, teaching, he says, forbid not to speak in tongues. Let everything be done decently in order. But that, that, uh, 
Holy, the Holy Spirit and the manifestations of the Spirit in your life, getting sensitive to Him, that's key to everything. Look here at verse 9 in uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. It says, but just as, as it is written in Scripture, things which the eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It's not entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared for those who love Him, who hold Him in affectionate reverence, who obey Him, who gratefully recognize the benefits that He has bestowed. He says, for God has unveiled them. What is them in this verse? Uh, it says God has unveiled them. What them is he talking about? He's talking about what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what's not entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. God has unveiled those things and revealed them to us. How? The Holy Spirit. He said, for the Spirit searches all things diligently, even sounding and measuring the profound depths of God, the divine counsels, and things far beyond human understanding. What person knows the thoughts and the motives of a man, except for the man's spirit within him? So also no one knows the thoughts of God, except who? So if you're developing a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you're opening up the world, well, you can actually know the thoughts of God concerning everything. Like, whoa. And he ends this whole chapter that way. Go to the next verse. Now, we've received not the spirit of the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God. Now, here's why. We've received the Holy Spirit who is from God so that we may what? We may know and understand. Otherwise, the, I like what Brother Hagin used to say. He said, do you think the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you as a holy hitchhiker? Just along for the ride? I used to just laugh at that. Because a lot of times people get filled with the Spirit and they're like, well, okay, I got it. You got it. No, this is not an end. This is just a beginning. You got it, all right. You got Him. Now, as you learn to walk with Him, what does He do? He unveils. He reveals. I like what the Passion says. It says, to reveal God's inmost heart and deepest mysteries. That's what the Holy Spirit gives. And when you spend time with Him and you open up your spirit to Him... This is where all, see, you understand that the manifestations and the gifts of the Spirit, no one owns them at all. They're His. I had a guy come up to me one time and says, I, because uh, we were recruiting people for our junior high team at Church on the Move. He says, I think you need me on your team. I said, N I didn't know him. I said, really? You think so? <laughs> he goes, yes, I, I know you do. Well, why would you think that? He said, because I possess the gift of healing. Oh, you do? Oh, Yeah. I possess the gift of healing. Well, do you understand? Really, the Holy Spirit possesses the gift of healing. But here's the good news. There's nine manifestations of the Spirit. And if you get, got Him, you got them all. And those could all manifest at any time through you, whichever one's needed. Right? But if, it was, if I possessed it, then I could just pull it out any time I want, like my keys. I could just pull it out. It doesn't work that way. It says that all the gifts of the Spirit operate as the Spirit wills. But here's the good news. He always wills. It's us getting connected with Him and getting sensitive to Him. He always, you know, there's, there's not a person in this city right now He didn't want to heal. He wants everybody healed. Right? So what's the church doing right now? Well, hopefully we're doing this. We're figuring out, okay, Holy Spirit, how do you want to do this? How do you want to affect these people? Right? Uh, who's from God? We may know and understand the wonderful things freely given to us by God. Next verse. Said, we also speak of these things, not in words taught or supplied by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit. Can you have thoughts or words that are taught to you by the Spirit? That's what's going to happen in this exercise. We're going to ask the Lord, just like we did last week. We got in groups of four, right? And then we asked this question. Lord... If this person were a color, person to your right, if this person were a color, what color would they be and why? And what do you want me to tell them about that? Right? Well, you, you think, well, is God really going to speak to me? Yeah, He always will. Right? Because what? The Spirit has things to say. And when you, when you have that, uh, I don't know, boldness where you just take the risk and step out and just do it. Again, watching Sarah read to Deborah last week, it was precious. You know, because I could tell, well, you know, almost apologetically, well, 
No, he gave me the color orange. And it was because, and I could just see it was impacting Deborah. <laughs> but Sarah just kind of thought, well, how do I know this God? How do I know this is not God? Well, you ask, Lord. And you ask, ask, and he actually gave an answer. See, but those are words given by the Spirit. Because Sometimes we get confused because we, we think that the, the manifestations of the Spirit are supposed to be different than they are. Otherwise, yes, they're very supernatural, but they're very natural. If you learn to flow with him, wow, the thoughts that came through my head, it sounded like my thoughts. Well, they were your thoughts, but he's talking to you. <laughs> Wouldn't it be scary to have somebody else's voice in your head? I mean, wow. See, he's, there's words taught by the Spirit. Thoughts given by the Spirit. Next verse. It says, but the natural unbelieving man doesn't what? Accept the things, the teachings, or the revelations of the Spirit of God. Have you ever bumped into that person? I'm, I'm not talking about unbeliever. I'm talking about a believer. You ever bumped into a believer that's an unbelieving believer? They don't believe in any of this. I don't believe in any of that. And it's like, don't worry, it'll not get on you. If you don't believe in any of it, right? They shut. Uh, uh, otherwise, I don't know why they have a, 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 a spiritless Christianity. God wants to speak to people through people, right? They don't accept the revelation to the Spirit of God. Their foolishness, absurd, illogical to him. He's incapable of understanding them because they are spiritually discerned and appreciated. He is unqualified to judge spiritual matters. Now listen to this verse. This verse is a really good one if you want to read this one in different translations, just to help you. It said, but the spiritual man... The spiritually mature Christian, he judges all things. I like this. Questions, examines. You know, God's not upset if you question something. He's not upset if you question something. Why? But now, if you question something, don't stay along, around long enough to get the answer. He didn't like that. But if you question something, ask him a question. I don't understand that. Why would you do that? Or why would it be that way? Or, and you question, start questioning him on things. He loves that. He said, Judge all things, questions, examines, and applies what the Holy Spirit reveals. Yet is himself judged by what? By no one. It says here, the unbeliever cannot judge and understand the believer's spiritual nature. If you read this, like I say, in a bunch of different translations, it gives you a really good sense of, wait a minute. God is excited that I want to learn spiritual gifts. And he... he he is the only, because some people say, oh, man, why would you want to even get involved with that? That's all fake. That's all phony. And, you know, you're going to disappoint yourself. All this kind of stuff is like, no, 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 no. No, God likes it when you do. So they're judging you for something that they think, well, according to this verse, where would they fall on the spiritual scale? They would be the unspiritual man. The spiritual person is always looking. Now look how this look how this chapter ends, guys. So for the one, the one who has known the mind and purpose of the Lord, so as to instruct him, we have the what? To be guided by his thoughts and his purposes. Do we have a right to be guided by his thoughts and purposes? Yeah. The minds and the thoughts of Christ. It, it, it talks about let this mind be in you. God wants us to think like him. You know, just because you read Isaiah 55, where it says, it says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. Well, true, but what if I renew my mind and I fill my mind with the word? That's his thoughts. That's his ways. So you could actually, don't be conformed, it says in Romans 12 too. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We could think like God thinks. Now understand, this is, you know that when the letter was written, to the church at Corinth, right? It wasn't written in chapters. You know that, right? It was a whole letter. What we read in chapter 14, this is chapter 2 of the same letter. Otherwise, he's trying to get over to people the Holy Spirit is important in our lives. He wants you to inquire and, and really have a, a lifetime quest of, okay, Lord, what are we going to do here? We, I, I want to learn this. I, I want to be involved with this. So I may not be good at it now, but I want to be good at it. Amen?
So here's what I'd like to do. And in fact, these three ladies here, you are a group. You are now a group. Okay? And I got paper here. In fact, Roxanne, you help me out. Let me, you can hand a paper out to everybody. And Dave, why don't you hand out a pen to everybody that doesn't have a pen? Now, if you're watching right now, Sherilyn, you're at home, Paul, whoever, listen, I want you guys to get a paper and a pen. You guys are going to do these exercises with us. Now, uh, uh, Adriana, if you're by yourself, here's what I want you to do if you're watching right now. I, there may be others watching. If there's a couple of you, I know that Adriana's probably by herself. So what I want you to do is you could text me tomorrow or even tonight the things that the Lord gives you. And you could, you could use me, because we're going to be talking about different things. And you'll see what I mean. So you go on. So last week, we asked the Lord about the person to your right. If this person were a color, what color would they be? Why? Or what does that mean? And what do you want to communicate? This week, here's what I'm going to do. If this person, so Stephen would be the person to your right, so it would be Connie. If this person were an animal... Right? This person were an animal. What animal would they be? Why? What does that mean? And what do you want to communicate? If this person were an animal, what animal would they be? Why? Or what does that mean? What do you want to communicate? Well, I'm doing it too, but my wife is not here, so I'm going to give this to her. But I just asked the Lord, what animal would she be? And it's just like Dave said, instantly, the Lord gave me falcon. Falcon. And it says, she has a keen eye, a keen far-reaching eye, is a warrior, and loves to sit on the hand of the master awaiting the next command. You know, so these things, now think about this. The things that you guys got, I mean, were you thinking about any of those things at all before you ask? You see, that's how you could tell the difference. And these training exercises, this is, it's, part, it's important that you recognize that. You know, because I, I heard uh, Roxanne said, like a bunny. Well, have you been thinking about bunnies all day? No. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's why we have to learn to trust him. Right? You have to learn to trust him because he's speaking to you. He's showing you stuff. He's revealing stuff. Next one is this. Ask the Lord about the person and ask to him this. If they were the book of the Bible, what book would they be and why? What does that mean? And what do you want to com communicate to them? What does he want to communicate? If you were a book of the Bible, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, etc., Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. L well, let's just, let's just do that. I'm going to start with Tim again. I'm going to go all the way around so you guys can hear. Just loud enough, Tim, so they can hear. And then do the same with you guys. Yeah, we got one. And then that way, they can hear online. Good idea. Dave. There you go. Okay, this is for Stephen. I said he's the book, uh, if I pick a book, so it was the book of Job. Job had negative friendships who tried to pull him down, but Job trusted in God, and God brought about his deliverance. So how it applies was trust in God. He's the one who will always bring about your deliverance. Awesome. Have you jump in on the next one, Rob? Thing. I'll, I'll explain it to on the next one. Job, you may have struggle sometimes, but you always trust God no matter what we're talking about. Good, Stephen. Uh, this is for Pastor Dave. Um, you know, no one in the ark. God wants challenges for Dave, and Dave just loves challenges. He 
like I'll just take this off. So this is for Pastor Tim, the book of John. He's a follower of Jesus, and he likes preaching the good news. He's going to preach more. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, it's Job. So, um, but um, Mitch has had, like, um, he has worldly friends, and he trusts God. It's not the first time. <laughs> Well, I was just going to say I, I can relate to the book of Job. <laughs> it fit, huh? No, he just, yeah, just the book of Job has been encouraging just because of the, the um, being able to relate what he's been through. Very Even cool. Even though he's been through like way more than I've been through, but it's just like, it's so encouraging to read it. It's not depressing. It's yeah, like, yeah. So you, you got to realize that you were on the right <laughs> <laughs> You know. <laughs> um, well, Mary, um, I'm just, I, I, I don't know her, but, you know, <laughs> um, so basically the book of James, um, you know, just praying about it, you know, it's just like, uh, James chapter one, verse 22, um, through verse 24, um, be, be doers of the word and not hearers, only, um, the ones that are deceiving their own selves, so it seems like you are just a doer. <laughs> um, but good. like for if any hearer of the word and not a doer is like unto a man beholding his um, natural face in the glass. But for he, um, I have King James Version here. So. That's okay. Um, but he, uh, for he who uh, behold himself and go with his way and straightforward, what a manner of man he was. So it just seems like you just like really take the word of God seriously and that's just like the word that I got you nailed it you really take his word seriously so that's what you almost you. made me cry I, I got my guts back yeah. <laughs> isn't it great when somebody that doesn't know you yes the Lord speaks through them concerning things that are true mm. that's awesome well, that's awesome um I got the book of Daniel for you um because uh it's a long-reaching book and he gave me a 2-4 for you, which doesn't make sense to me, but I hope it does to you. Uh, then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic. Long live the king. Tell us the dream, and we will, get, we will tell you what it means. And then um, he also said, I speak in original language too. Cool. Um, Roxanne, Book of Ruth, and because of your loyalty to your family, she also loved God, um, trust being redeemed, trust being redeemed, and what that stands for. Amen. Very good. Here's what the Lord gave me for Pastor Kelly, the Book of Revelation, revealed truth there's revealed truths that are plain. There's mysteries that need to be sought out, ever unfolding and revealing newness in you and around you. So the next one is this, guys. And Rob, this is where this comes in. What you're doing is the person to your right, which would be Tim. Of course, you don't know Tim. No. And a lot of them don't know each other. And so what we're going to do is ask the Lord this question. Say, Lord, if Tim was a character in the Bible, what character would he be? And why, or what does this mean, and what do you want to communicate? So as the Lord gives you a character, and, you know, why and all that, write it down for Tim. It's for Tim. He's going to give you a word about Tim. Yeah, see, and everybody's going to kind of go to their right. So Dave is praying the same thing about you. So let me say it again. If this person were a character in the Bible... A Bible character, what character would they be and why? What does it mean? What, what, does the Lord, what does he want you to communicate to this person through that character? I'm going to share. I'm going to share Pastor Kelly's first. 
kind of surprising. You know, I asked and, and kind of waited, and the Lord said, Moses. Very strong, very humble, very committed, totally understood by God, but sometimes mister misunderstood by men. Mary, I'm going to start with you. Okay, I forgot. I got Naomi for Deborah um, because um, you take care, and, and he had me underline take care of what is needed, helping others to be in the right place at the right time. That's cool. That's the word. Roxanne, I got John for you. He always referred to himself as the one who Jesus loved. And. Look at yourself in the mirror and say that to yourself. <laughs> that reinforces that. Because Jesus loves you very much. I don't have, I don't have one. That's okay. Let her do hers. We'll come back to you. Um, I don't really have one either. <laughs> but I, I mean, I can tell you where I was led to. Okay. That's good. Um, so basically, Genesis chapter 17 um i guess basically uh remind me like of uh, sarah and like her loyalty to her husband and um so basically you know and then how she was loyal to god and waiting for their child and how long she waited um so uh, the verses that i got i'm gonna i want to pull it up Sorry, I'm like, <laughs> um, yeah, so basically her loyalty to Abraham and God. And um, so, uh, yeah, Sarah, chapter 17, verse 16, and then on. That's where I was led. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Brady. Yep. <laughs> start with, last time we'll start with you again. Stephen, Daniel. <laughs> and because Daniel, Daniel would not compromise his standards in following God. And it, it was in the context, you know, in the story about praying. He wasn't going to not stop praying. But how it applied to you is what I wrote, is you'll not compromise your standards in following God. That sounds like you, Stephen. I got David in verse 1 I have um, trusting in God to help me fight the inner giant. That's good. Really good. I saw a young David throwing a spear, and you were piercing people's hearts with God's word. Good. So for <coughs> Rod, I saw a young Paul, the Apostle Paul. This is what the Lord wants you to know. It's, uh, it's time for you. It, you're in your training stages of life in the word. Um, you're to press hand to his word, sit at the feet of Jesus, and be where you can be trained. You move around a lot. He wants you to settle down and start learning. Wow. Good word. <laughs> okay. Um, I came up with um, good faith judgment a person that I can trust and have a friendship with and a person who has good faith judgment and a person who I can trust and have a friendship with. And yep. that's what I found in Tim. Yeah. Well, you're right. That's Tim. <laughs> Roxanne, you ready? I'm sorry. You can tell it later, but that that's the gist of it. That's good. But that's I and off the top of my head. But yeah, again, 
tell, what were her attributes again? She always followed God. Yeah. Yeah. Good words. Really good words. Now you got me curious, so let me know. Text me when you find out. <laughs> hey, I want to have Pastor Dave come. He's going to be sharing tonight before we uh, receive our offerings. And you guys, wasn't this fun? What it does is it's it's tuning you and tuning me to just the things of the Spirit. Because if you if you get so you can hear from God in a setting like this, and you, you could hear from God anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. See, you came and got a good word, Rob. <laughs> well, you came in here and he, he spoke to you. You're Dave, so that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Word says to, huh? Oh, if you need an offering envelope, raise up your hand and I'll turn you loose, Dave. Mm-hmm.